These hills and mountains of Wales remain one of the finest training grounds for the Border Collie. This is one of the main reasons for the continued strength of the Welsh farmers on the trial fields of Britain. The work of gathering the ewes and lambs from these hill pastures would almost be impossible without the keenness and intelligence of the Border Collie dog. Welsh farmers are well known for their abilities as keen stockmen, and an important part of their work in shepherding has been their skill with their partners, their Border Collies. From the rough hill country to the Imbai farms in the valleys, Wales has managed to claim some 21 supreme championships throughout the history of the international. It was in 1989, three years ago, that the international was held at Margam Park in South Wales. That year, the expertise of Bobby Dial with his young dog Wisp gave the championship to Scotland. 1989 was also a memorable year for Julie Deptford as she led the field into the last day of competition. The following year, in the heart of Northumberland, the team shield returned once again to Wales. The international at Annick Castle proved a great success for Gwyn Jones from Penmachno in North Wales and his eight-year-old queen. Having scored the highest run in the qualifying, Gwyn went on to capture the supreme shield in what certainly appeared to be, for anyone watching, an effortless run. Last year's international trial crossed the borders into Scotland onto the lush slopes of Carmichael in Lanarkshire. The dominance of the Scottish handlers won back the team trophy from Wales and on the final day Johnny Wilson and Spot went on to claim his winning position. Roddy McDermott and Cap took the reserve championship position with another Scotsman, Michael Shearer, in third place with his four-year-old Mist. Alid Owen and Ben were the highest scoring for the Welsh team, with Bobby Dial coming in fifth place with his well-known dog Wisp. The highest scoring Irishman was John Brennan in seventh position with Dell, and Raymond McPherson leading the English team in twelfth place with Gunnar Katie. And so for the 1992 finals, we travelled south to the west coast of Wales and to the flat dykeland of Tancastle Park, a few miles from the coastal town of Aberystwyth. Martin O'Neill led the Irish team for 1992, having won the Irish national at Barons Court in August. Martin, a well-respected handler, has represented the Irish team some 17 times. For this year, the Welsh team came to Aberystwyth with a formidable history of trialling success. Led by the Swansea Valley farmer, Erwin Daniel, the 1992 Welsh qualifiers had totaled some nine supreme shields to their credit. The English team was led by the well-known handler, Thomas Longton, this year's English national champion. Thomas has represented his country on many occasions. He is supported in the English team by other well-known handlers, such as John Thomas, John Chamberlain, Tim Longton, John Harrison, and other previous international competitors. The winner of this year's Scottish national, Bobby Dial, with his six-year-old Wisp, led Scotland into this year's supreme finals. Bobby's past successes were not alone in the Scottish team. Other well-respected handlers such as John Templeton, Johnny Wilson, Alistair McRae, Stuart Davidson, just to mention a few, made up an offensive that was to prove to be a strong force in defending their claim for the team shield. The two days of qualifying begin bright and early on the Thursday morning. 
Some 30 handlers compete in the singles competitions on the Thursday, with the remaining 27 competitors finishing up on the following day. The course rules and scores for the qualifying trial were as follows. The gather of 400 yards could be taken on either side. Once the sheep were lifted, they were brought down the field on a straight line to the handler through two sets of gates seven yards wide and some 150 yards from the handler's post. If the gates were missed, no retry was allowed. The handlers had to remain at the post and finish the fetch by passing the sheep behind him onto the start of the drive. On the drive, the handler had to once again remain at the post and direct his dog to drive the sheep 450 yards over a triangular course through two sets of gates, both some seven yards apart. No retry at either sets of gates was allowed. The drive ended when the sheep entered the shedding ring. Not until the sheep entered the shedding ring could the handler leave the post. In the shedding ring, two unmarked sheep had to be shed off from the five sheep. This had to be done within the boundaries of the ring, which was some 40 yards in diameter. Once the shed was taken, the dog had to be in full control of the shed sheep. Once the shed was completed, the handler had to proceed to the pen, leaving his dog to bring the sheep to the pen. The handler had to stand at the gate holding a six-foot rope that was attached to the gate. Once the dog had worked the sheep into the pen, the gate had to be closed. The final part of the course was the single sheep. Here the handler returned to the shedding ring, leaving his dog to bring the sheep from the pen to the ring. One of the two marked sheep had to then be shed off within the boundaries of the ring. Once shed, the dog had to hold the single sheep to the judge's satisfaction. The handler was not allowed to assist the dog in wearing the single. The score for the qualifying course was 20 points for the outrun, 10 points for the lift, and then 20 points for the fetch. The drive was awarded 30 points, with 10 points for the shed, 10 for the pen, and a final 10 for the single. This added up to a total of 110 points for each judge, and a grand total of 440 points for the four judges. The time limit for the course was 15 minutes. Pat Byrne Jr. was the fourth competitor to run on the first day of the qualifying competition. With his seven-year-old dot, Pat has managed to represent his country of Ireland on many occasions in the international competition. At the Irish National in the past two years, Pat and Dot have successfully managed to capture the Brace Championship in partnership with Pat's five-year-old dog, Star. Both Dot and Star were sired by John Templeton's Roy. The drive was probably the most costly part of the course, losing nearly a third of the possible 120 points, before going on to a perfect score for the shed, pen and single. This left Pat with a final score of 361.
The career of Wynne Edwards on the national and international trial field has seen many successes. In 1981, and then again in 1982, Wynne claimed the Supreme Shield with his well-known dog Bill. The dog he is running in this year's international is Don, a nine-year-old son of Bill. 1992 was the fourth consecutive year that Don has qualified for the Welsh team. In 1990 at Annick Castle, his qualifying run scored him the second highest score in the first two days of the trial, and fourth place on the final day's competition for the Supreme Shield. The first run of the day had scored Alid Owen and his two-year-old Craig a very respectable 406 points. But this run of Wynne Edwards and Don proved even stronger and the final score of 410 set an even higher standard for the remaining 52 handlers. John Chamberlain works as a stock manager on a large livestock and arable farm at Abdon in Shropshire. He works with over 100 suckler cows and a flock of 600 crossbred ewes. Although John has competed for the English team before, this was the first year with his four-year-old Bess. Bess is out of John's own Tess, a daughter of Sydney Price's Davy, the 1987 Supreme Champion. On the father's side, Bess goes back to John's own Tweed, a son of David Guild's Tweed, the Scottish Farmers' Champion in 1984 and Scotland's Driving Champion in 1981. Tweed's bloodlines go back to Whiston Cap, Templeton's Cap, Richardson's Sweep and Gilchrist Spot. The first part of the course proved to be the most costly for John, losing some 119 points throughout the run and leaving him with a final tally of 321. Ivan Hopkins farms speckled face ewes and a suckler beef herd on the edge of the Cambrian Mountains in West Wales. His seven-year-old Jill, that he qualified with for this year's trial, goes back to the breeding of the 1977 international champion, John Thomas's Craig. Jill's mother is Ivan's own Fly, the winner of the One Man and His Dog trial in 1983 and the Subaru Championship in 1985. Jill's father was the well-known dog John Templeton's Roy.
One awkward sheep helped to lose Ivan and Jill some valuable points. Before ending the course with a perfect scoring pen and single, in all 75 points had been lost throughout the run, bringing their total to 365, a score that was to prove just out of range at a chance for the final day's competition. John Thomas seems to have an almost permanent position in the English team each September. In both 1990 and again in 1991, he won the Shepherds Trophy at the English National. His seven-year-old Joss is of his own Dilwyn lad and out of Barwell's Dell. He scored well on his outrun and lift, but lost a lot of points on the first part of the drive, bringing the ewes back through the first set of gates. The final part of the course, the single, lost John and Jost all but one point. Bill Elliott, who shepherds at Halterburn near Yetham, on the Scottish border, has represented Scotland on a number of occasions. Running his four-year-old Moss, he managed the course well through to the shed. Unfortunately, problems in the shedding ring and at the pen consumed too many points and too much time, using up his 15 minutes before the single was successfully taken. Another frequent competitor at the International is the Irishman Dennis Burchell, the 1985 Irish national winner, and the International Brace Champion the same year. In partnership with his young homebred bitch Jan, Dennis took to the post with just two other competitors to run on the first day of qualifying. This is the sixth year that John Griffith has represented the Welsh team in the singles competition. On his farm on the hills of Snowdonia, John works 350 Welsh half-bred ewes in conjunction with a milk round through the villages in his area. He also keeps busy helping new handlers master the craft of working sheepdogs, both on his farm and also at the nearby agricultural college. 
John was partnered in the qualifying trial with his six-year-old Sweep, a dog of his own breeding of his Glen and Fly. John's run with Sweep scored well, with just a few points lost on the drive. With a final tally of 412, he ended up with the highest scoring run on the first day. At the beginning of the first day of competition, Allied Owen and Wynne Edwards had scored 406 and 410 respectively. Ken Bramer, representing Scotland, had managed 379 points. Thomas Longton, with his nine-year-old Tweed, lost most of his points on the first part of the run, ending up with a total of 350. Alistair McRae had a disappointing run with his first dog in the qualifying trial, his eight-year-old Knapp, scoring 279. Englishman Dick Roper, who manages a farm on the Cotswolds in the west of England, managed a high score of 390 with his three-year-old calf. The Irishman, Hartford Logan, scored well with a final tally of 388 with his four-year-old dog, Dick. Arian Morgan and Rock managed a high scoring 392, and then near the end of the day, John Griffith pulled the high scoring run of 412 with sweep. The pleasant weather we had on Thursday was gone by the following morning, and rain and strong winds had taken its place. When the first of us arrived on the Friday morning, about an hour before the trial was due to start, strong winds flipped over two of the stands to the right of the ones we were sitting in, and flattened some of the trade tents in the area behind. Alistair McRae had run his eight-year-old nap the day before. On Friday he ran Corey, a three-year-old he had bought earlier this year from Bob Shannon. Corey's breeding goes back to Guild's Tweed through Rob Shannon's Nell, and on the maternal side to Brady's Jim and Bosnuth Coon. Jim Brady and Jim won the International for the first time for Ireland in 1972, when the Supreme was held at Newcastle in the north of England. The following year, when the International was held at Barla, this pair went on to win the driving championship for Ireland as well. His final score with Corey, of 376, placed him in eighth spot so far in the two days of qualifying competition. John Templeton needs little introduction to the Border Collie handlers around the world. There are very few handlers that can boast of the triumphs and awards that John has achieved in his years with his dogs. This year was the 27th time that John has represented the Scottish team, winning the Scottish National four times and the Scottish Brace Championship nine times. The breeding lines on his 1992 qualifying dog, three-year-old Spot, go back directly to his famous dog Moss on both sides, being sired by his own Ben. With just 41 points lost and a final score of 399, John and Spot were in a strong position to move into the finals, with just three other handlers ahead in points so far in the qualifying runs. Gwyn Jones and Queen won the Supreme Shield in 1990 and the Welsh National Championship in 1987. At over 10 years old, Queen has been a major part of Gwyn's trialling career through the last of the 1980s and up until now.
This year's qualifying run wasn't to prove so successful though. It was the drive that caused so much of their problems, with two ewes continually splitting away from the other three sheep. This lost Gwyn 78 of the 120 points on the drive, and 108 on the completed run, allowing a final total of 332 points. Johnny Wilson and Spot had clenched the Supreme Shield at Carmichael last year. Spot is a son of Johnny was well-liked little bitch Peg, the dog that partnered him to winning the Shepherds Championship in 1984, 1986 and again in 1987. On the sire's side, Scott goes back to Raymond McPherson's cap. His high score of 387 was a reflection of the steady and trouble-free run. This gave Johnny and Spot the ninth highest score so far in the qualifying trial, with some 15 handlers left to run. Chris McNaughton and Spy were the next on the course. It was the first part of the outrun that lost this pair the most significant points, some 35 of the possible 80. A further 28 points were lost with the poor line on the first part of the fetch. By the end of the run, Chris had scored some 345 points, but too few to find a position for the following day. By the time Stuart Davidson and Hope were completing the last part of the drive back to the shedding ring, this pair had lost very few points. An almost perfect outrun and lift with just 16 of the possible 80 points lost on the fetch, and a score of 104 out of 120 on the drive put Stuart in a strong position heading into the last part of the course.
The Shed lost a further six points, but still a respectable score. The first few attempts at the pen proved costly on time and points, with the ewes breaking away to the left of the course. By the time the sheep were penned, there wasn't enough time for Stuart to complete the single successfully, dropping his possible high score to a disappointing 341. John Harrison has been a frequent competitor at this annual event. At the English National this year, he managed to qualify two of his dogs for the International. On the first day, he ran his seven-year-old Craig for a final score of 365 and a half. And then on the second day, he took to the field with Meg, an eight-year-old bitch off John Thomas's Don, and out of Raymond McPherson's Zena. On the first part of the run, Meg lost valuable points running out very directly on the start of the outrun. Missing the second set of drive gates also added to his difficulties, but their position improved with a top scoring shed and pen. A grip whilst taking the single lost John a further 40 points before ending up with 325 for a final score. Michael Shearer had qualified his five-year-old miss for the second year in a row. This partnership came third on the final day at Carmichael last year. Mist is out of R.D. Robertson's sleek and sired by W. Cormac's cap. Michael was on line for one of the highest scoring runs in the qualifying until he misjudged the end of the cross drive. His desperation showed as the ewes ran high around the gates. This mistake contributed to a loss of 48 points on the drive on an otherwise high scoring run. When Irwin Daniel took to the field with Fly, there were just the four captains remaining to run. Fly is a six-year-old daughter of the past Scottish champion Dryden Joe. Up until this point in the trial, the three highest scores, which were all above 400, were from members of the Welsh team.
Scoring on the fetch and the drive lost the Welsh captain the necessary points to find a place on the final day. Bobby Dyell came to Aberystwyth in great form. His partnership with Wisp over the last few years had proven their competitive abilities. In 1989, this team won the Supreme International title and also the Scottish Shepherds Championship. Last year, he continued his success once again, claiming the Scottish Shepherds title. And then this year, coming to Aberystwyth having taken the Scottish National Shield at Thurso. By the end of his run, Bobby and Wisp had lost only 48 points, 16 of which were accounted for with problems taking the single sheep. His 392 final score easily placed him to compete on the final day. Martin O'Neill won the Irish National this year at Barons Court in County Tyrone with his three-year-old dog Flash. Flash was side by Jock Welsh's Watty and is out of Boyle's Jet. Martin farmed some 350 acres of quality stock ground at Summerhill in County Meath, running 800 crossbred breeding ewes and some 250 beef cattle. As the scores of the two days of qualifying shaped up, Martin's run was to prove just six points out of the running for a chance at the championship. By the end of the second day, all of the qualifying runs had been completed. Jeff Evans and Ira had scored a high 390 and a half early on the Friday morning. Alistair McRae's run with Corey was just enough to place him for a run on Saturday. The highest score for the Friday came from John Templeton and Spot with 399, and not far behind him was Johnny Wilson's run with 387. Derek Scriminger, with his six-year-old Jet, placed well in the 15 finalist with a grand score of 393 and the highest score on the English team. Wilf Reed's 376 just found him a place for the final day with his six-year-old Sam. Thomas Longton also scored 376 with Jem, followed by Bobby Dial's run of 392.
When you take the A4120 out of Avariswith, you will wind your way through the small hamlets of Myra and Caposion, and then on to the village of Devil's Bridge. The hill farms of this area carry the tough ewes that you would expect on these farms. Mostly, they are either pure or part Welsh mountain, one of the hardiest ewes found throughout the hills of Britain. Each autumn these hills are gathered, the lambs are sorted and then taken to market. This is a weekly process for these hill farmers and then gradually by the new year all of the lambs in the area will have been sold. The sale at Devil's Bridge is held every Wednesday. Up until midday the ewes and lambs are brought to the yard and then sorted and penned. A long time ago these lambs would have been walked, but today the Land Rover and trailer are the most popular form of transport. The Devil's Bridge Market is one of the few seasonal markets that's still operating today. This market is quite unique, insofar as it has been left unaltered through its over 100 years of history. There are no microphones or speaker systems for the auctioneer and no heating to fend off the biting cold temperatures of winter. In actual fact, there's no electricity at the mart at all, and the sail ring itself is wide open to the elements. Soon after midday, the sail begins. Each group of sheep is driven to the ring, here the farmer works the animals around, keeping them moving and discussing the poor price with the auctioneer. This is one of the few rings left where the farmer barters with the auctioneer, encouraging him to keep the bidding going for a little longer. And surprisingly, it always seemed to bring an extra few bids and enough to allow for a sale. Although it is a seasonal market and is closed for more than half of the year, the service it provides for the local hill farmers during the autumn and early winter months is a valuable opportunity for these farmers to sell their lambs. Another traditional event in Wales is the annual draft ewe and lamb sale on the Canure estate. The hills that make up the nearly 15,000 acres of the farm were once part of the great forest of Brecknock. It came into the hands of the Scottish farming family, the McTurks, in the 1800s and remains very traditional even today. The shepherds make up the important part of the daily routine on this hill farm and right through the year they work with their dogs, shepherding the high ground that makes up the estate. On the day of the sale, the ewes and lambs are brought to the yard for their final sorting. The shepherds spend the weeks beforehand sorting the different classes of draft ewe and lambs into groups of 200, ready for the morning of the sale. As has been the tradition throughout its history, the local hill farmers come to Canure on the sale day to help out with the final sorting and penning. The shepherd's kitchen is a major part of the tradition. Throughout the sale day, the tables are kept full with lamb, bread and pickles. Here the helpers, whether they are the shepherds or the local farmers, are all welcomed for their breakfast, dinner and tea. Once the auction begins, the sale ring soon becomes the focal point at the farm. The rams always sell first. These are either young rams that haven't been selected for use on the hill, or they are the more mature the rams that are no longer needed in the breeding program on Canure. The draft ewes that are sold at this sale are usually taken to the kinder lowland farms. Although their life on the hills has come to an end, they have a reputation as worthy breeding ewes in a kinder situation. There are many thousands of lambs raised on the hills of Canure. 
and all but the replacement ewe lambs are sold on this day. Some of these lambs have grown well and are now ready for slaughter. Most of the smaller lambs, though, are bought to be grown out on the lush pastures of lowland farms both in Wales and across the borders into England. Much work goes into this yearly event. Weeks of gathering, sorting and planning are needed to make sure that everything goes well on the final day. And as the sale continues, the first of the ewes and lambs are being loaded for their new destination. And by nightfall, the pens are nearly empty again. And as one year of production ends, a new year is about to begin on the hills of Canure. At noontime on the first two days, the qualifying trial is interrupted for the finals of the brace competition. Only eight finalists qualify for the International Brace Championship, with two handlers representing each of the four countries of England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. In 1991, Pat McGedigan, running his two dogs Sable and Todd, won the finals with a score of 418. In second place was Pat Byrne Jr., the defending champion with 389, with his two dogs Star and Dot. In third place was Thomas Longton with Tweed and Jem, running for England. And then narrowly behind him was Julie Deptford with 354, with Bess and Nell. For this year, the finalists in the four teams were made up by John Griffith and Colin Gordon for Wales, Thomas Longton and John Fletcher for England, John Campbell and Julie Deptford for Scotland, and Jim McConnell and John McFadden running for Ireland. Of these handlers, John Griffith, Thomas Longton and Julie Deptford also represented their countries in the 1991 finals. The course for the Brace Championship covers an outrun of 800 yards for 10 sheep. Each of the dogs has to take one side on the outrun, ideally reaching the sheep at the same time. Once the two dogs have reached the lift point behind the sheep, they are allowed to cross sides. But from that point on, they have to remain on their own sides and no crossing is allowed. Once they have reached the sheep, they must be fetched in a straight line through the fetch gates set some nine yards apart. Once through the fetch gates, the sheep must continue in a straight line to the handler. At the end of the fetch, the sheep must be worked around the handler and onto the start of the drive. The drive covers some 600 yards. Here the handler will direct the dogs to work the sheep around a triangular course and through two sets of gates, and finally back to the shedding ring. The drive is finished when the sheep enter the shedding ring. Throughout this first part of the course, the handler must remain at the handler's post. The shed in the brace competition is quite different from that of the singles. Here the ten sheep have to be split into two groups of five. This must be done within the boundaries of the shedding ring. Once completed, one of the groups of five has to be penned in a diamond-shaped pen with an opening five feet wide and with no gate. Once the dog has worked the sheep into the pen, it must remain at the opening and prevent the sheep from escaping. Once the first pen is completed, the second group of sheep must be regathered and penned in the second pen. The scoring for the brace finals is 40 points for the outrun, 20 for the lift and 20 for the fetch. There are 30 points awarded for the drive and 10 for the shedding. Finally, there are 10 points for each of the pens for a grand total of 140 per judge and an aggregate score of 560 for the four judges. The first handler to run in the brace championships was John Griffith with his father and son team of Sweep and Moss, aged six and two respectively. Although Sweep has competed before in the brace finals, this was the first year that Moss had been his partner the strength of John's breeding line is clear to see 
with both dogs of his own breeding of his two bitches, Fly and Queen. John had an excellent run right through the course, losing some points though with the U's missing the second set of gates on the drive, ending up with a score of 477. <laughs> Thomas Longton has been a consistent competitor in the brace finals and the international trials. He has won the English national brace finals on a number of occasions, the most recent being in 1991 with Tweed and Jem, the brace pair that he has qualified with this year. The mother of these two dogs was his famous Bess, who won Thomas the Supreme Championship in 1986. Problems at the start of the course, on the outrun, lost this team a considerable amount of points. Once the two dogs had started on the fetch, their score greatly improved, ending up with a final tally of 363. John Campbell, with his two dogs, Dave and Roy, had a disappointing day. Roy crossed over on the outrun, and so both dogs ended the outrun on the same side. Further points were lost on the drive, bringing their score for the day to 280. On the second day, the first competitor was Colin Gordon. Colin farms on the Gower Peninsula, and throughout the years has seen many successes adding to them the Welsh National Brace Championship this year. He ran at this year's trial his five-year-old Cap and two-year-old Jill. Problems on the start of the course lost a lot of points, and then difficulties on the first penning ended up with Colin running out of time on the second pen for a final score of 250. The Englishman John Fletcher came to the brace finals with his two dogs Craig and Roy, having successfully taken the English brace championship for the first time this year. Both of his dogs were sired by the well-known John Thomas's Don. Apart from a very disappointing drive and cross drive, John lost very few points through the remainder of the run. Unfortunately, all but 13 of his drive points were lost, and so this dropped an otherwise very high score to 392. Julie Deptford has had two very successful years competing her mother and daughter team of Bess and Nell. As both last year's Scottish National Brace Champion and then again this year, she once again led the Scottish team on the final day of competition.
Her final score of 422 placed her in second place behind John Griffiths' run of 477, with just one run remaining, that of the Irishman John McFadden. Nineteen ninety two was the first year that John McFadden competed his two dogs, Lynn and Don, in brace competitions. As a part time farmer from Ballamanor in County Antrim, he went on to successfully clench the Irish brace shield at Barons Court in August. And so, as the nineteen ninety two Irish champion, he heads Ireland into the finals at Aberystwyth. His four year old Lynn is a daughter of John Patterson's York and Porteous is die. Don is a son of his own gale and sired by Sammy Holmes' spot. John had a good run right through to the drive where he dropped 59 of the possible 120 points and leaving him with a high score of 417 when the gate closed on the second pen. The final scores and placings for the brace finals were in first place came John Griffith with Sweep and Moss, in second place Julie Defford, and in third place John McFadden. The final day of the International is made up of the 15 runs for the Supreme Shield and also the team trophy. Six members of the Welsh team had qualified for the final day. Five handlers from Scotland, three from England and one from Ireland. The course for the Supreme started with an outrun to the left-hand side of the field to gather the first group of ten sheep some 800 yards away. Once the sheep had been lifted, then they have to be brought down the course through the fetch gates and onto the post. The first fetch gates were set nine yards apart on the left hand side of the field. Once the sheep have reached the post, the handler has to redirect the dog for the second group of sheep 800 yards away to the right of the course. Once the dog has reached the second group of sheep, they must be brought down the course and through the fetch gates. Once the fetch is completed, the first group should be brought to the second ten sheep. Once all of the sheep have been regathered, the dog must bring the sheep onto the handler and around the post for the start of the drive. The drive is in three parts over a triangular course of 600 yards. The sheep must be driven away to the right of the course to a set of gates nine yards wide. Once through these gates, the sheep will then have to be turned for the cross drive. Once through the cross drive gates, the sheep must then be brought back to the shedding ring. If either of the gates be missed, no retry is allowed. The shed is made in a ring 40 yards in diameter. Once the drive has been completed, the 15 unmarked sheep will then be shed off from the 5 marked sheep. This must be done in the boundaries of the shedding ring. If any marked sheep leave the ring and join any unmarked sheep, the marked and the unmarked sheep that they have joined must all be brought back into the ring for reshedding. Until the 15 unmarked sheep have been successfully shed off, penning is not allowed. Once shedding has been completed, the five marked sheep must be driven by the dog to the pen and then the sheep must be penned. The handler is not allowed to assist the dog in taking the sheep to the pen. The pen is six foot by nine foot to which a six-foot rope is attached. Once the handler reaches the pen, he must stand at the pen holding the rope whilst the dog works the sheep into the pen. Once the ewes have entered the pen, the gate must be closed. The point scores for the Supreme are 20 points for each outrun, 10 for each lift and 20 for each fetch. This gives a grand total of 100 points for the gather. The drive has a total of 40 points, the shed 20 and the pen 10. No points are awarded for either the shed or the pen when either of these parts of the course are not completed. The total score for the run is 170.
and an aggregate for the four judges of 680. There is a 30 minute time limit. Alid Owen was the first to compete on the first day of qualifying and so ended up as the first handler to the post on the final day. Alid farms some 500 Welsh half-bred ewes and 50 head of cattle in the uplands of North Wales. He came to Aberystwyth with his two-year-old Craig, a son of his own Ben, a dog that took Alid to the winning position at the Welsh Nationals in 1985, the Welsh National Driving Championship in 1987, plus making the final day at the International three times, in 1985, 1990, and then again in 1991. Craig is out of Roberts's Nell, a nine-year-old bitch that Alid sold as a pup. Nell was a litter sister to win Edward's Don, the second highest qualifier at this year's final. Nell goes back to win Edwards's Bill and to Alid's own Fly, a daughter of Alan Jones's champion dog, Craig. Up until the start of the drive, Alid had lost 92 points. The first part of the gather scored well, but problems with the ewes splitting up on the first fetch and then missing the fetch gates cost Alid more than half his fetch points. The second outrun was taken right away, and with just one extra whistle, Craig ended up behind the ewes on the start of the second fetch. He kept a direct line on the fetch, finishing up with a high-scoring second gather. An uneventful drive, shed and pen, left Alid and Craig with 130 points lost and a grand total of 550 points. Wynne Edwards had qualified Don with a score of 410 and the second highest qualifying run an accomplishment that he also managed in 1990 at Annick Castle. Don Sire was Wynn's supreme champion in 1981 and again in 1982, his famous bill.
Wynn started the course with a top scoring outrun and lift, losing a few points on the first fetch. His score on both gathers lost him 54 points out of a possible 400. By the end of the drive and shed, he had lost another 52 points. A perfect scoring pen left him with a high scoring run and a total of 574 out of a possible 680. The first of the Scotsmen to compete was Kenny Bramer, who shepherds near Rose Hall in Sutherland. He came to the trial with his eight-year-old Butte, the winner of last year's International Driving Championship. Kenny bought Butte from Alistair McRae after Alistair's successful second place position at the International two years ago. He started his run having to whistle Butte out twice to pick up the first group of ewes. By the end of both gathers he had managed a score of 332 out of 400. He kept his drive line well with just the right pressure on the sheep, and by the time he had arrived back in the shedding ring, he had only dropped a further 16 points on the three parts of the drive. His problem started in the shedding ring, with the marked sheep leaving the shedding ring and rejoining some of the shed sheep. This cost this pair dearly, losing 60 of the possible 80 shedding points. By the time the gate closed on the pen, his final score was tallied at 515, placing him behind both of the first two runs. Dick Roper, who manages a farm near North Leach in Gloucestershire, came to Aberystwyth having qualified two dogs for the English team, three-year-old Cap and seven-year-old Dick. His score of 390 on the first day with Cap had easily found him a position on the last day. At the start of his run, one whistle was needed to take Cap out to the first group of ewes. Otherwise, he had a good first outrun and fetch. Problems at the start of the second outrun would have lost Dick a lot of points, but once he took the right side, Cap went on for a good lift and fetch, scoring 290 out of the possible 400 for the start of the course. His drive went well, but lost nearly half of his points in the shedding ring, before taking a perfect scoring pen and finishing up with a final total of 507. Hartford Logan has a history of trial successes, winner of the Irish national trial some five times and when farming in Scotland, managed that country's national championship in 1981 and the international driving championship in 1980. Hartford has now retired to his native Ireland and runs a small farm on the outskirts of Belfast, where he raises blue-faced Leicester and Scottish black-faced sheep. 
His dogs are a main part of his retirement, and this year he qualified to represent Ireland with his four-year-old dog, Dick, a dog of his own breeding off Mickey and Jean. On the first part of the course, he managed to keep a strong score, with a commanding second outrun with Dick taking his whistle immediately. Some points had been lost on the first outrun, with Hartford whistling Dick out a number of times until he saw the sheep on the left-hand side of the course. This left him with a score of 340 for both gathers, dropping all of these 60 points on the first outrun and fetch. The last part of the run caused Hartford the most problems, losing half his points on the shed, 41 on the drive, and then scoring 28 out of 40 on the pen. This brought his total for his run to 527, placing him just ahead of Kemi Bremer in third place so far. Arian Morgan is the third generation of his family that have competed in sheepdog trials. Arian lives on his father's farm just outside the town of Aberystwyth. But farming isn't Arian's profession in life. Instead, he follows a family history of butchering that reaches back over 100 years and, as such, runs his own butcher's shop in the local market town of Aberystwyth. In his spare time, he works and trains his dogs on the Welsh ewes and Welsh black cattle that make up his father's farm. His five-year-old Rock is a son of Wilf Reed's Turk, the winner of the 1984 Supreme Championship at York. Rock is out of Arian's own bitch, Meg, and goes back to Grant Jones's Toss and Elwyn Griffiths's Craig. Arian scored well throughout the first part of the course, and managed one of the highest marked drives of the final day. Unfortunately, it was the shedding ring that was to upset the balance for Arian, and his struggle left him with too few minutes to finish the pen before the bell rang for time. What started out as a well-scored run ended up a frustrating 447 out of the possible 680.
By Saturday morning, John Griffith had already won the 1992 Brace Championship with his two dogs, Sweep and Moss, and also the Duchess of Devonshire's Farmer's Trophy for his top scoring qualifying run of 412 with Sweep. On the final day, he was the seventh handler to take to the field. By this time, Wynne Edwards had taken the highest scoring run with 574, and Alid Owen still held second place with 550. Now it was Sweep's turn to prove himself in the singles finals. Sweep is off John's own breeding of Fly and Glen. The very start of the run cost John some valuable points when Sweep started to come in part way out on his first outrun for the left hand group of ewes, and then losing over half his points on the first fetch with the ewes narrowly missing the gates. His second gather went much better with a final score of, for both gathers of 308 out of 400. A well managed drive gave him 132 points out of 160 but problems with shedding the last dew and then losing all but four points at the pen left him with a disappointing day and a total of 476. Jeff Evans, who farms near Astra Murig, ran his two-year-old Ira on the second day of qualifying. Ira is off Bobby Dial's six-year-old Wisp. The 800-yard outruns for both the first and the second group of views required some redirection before reaching the pickup points. Although costing some points for the outruns, he made up some ground on both fetches and a good line on the drive and cross drive. A wide turn around the gates before the last leg of the drive back to the shedding ring dropped a few extra points bringing the total up to the end of the drive to 127. A further 33 points were lost in the shedding ring, but a high scoring pen helped prop the final score at 516 for the day, and fifth position with seven handlers to go. Alistair McRae's qualifying score of 376 with his rough coated Corey narrowly edged him into the final day and a chance at the Supreme Shield. Corey's breeding goes back to Hartford Logan's gym and R.J. Shannon's fly. It was in 1990 at Annick Castle that Alistair won the International Shepherds Trophy with Butte. Alistair farms near Fosway in Kinross, about 25 miles north of Edinburgh and now being self-employed has moved into the farmer's class.
By the time the ewes entered the shedding ring at the end of the drive, Alistair and Corey had managed a very even, problem-free run. Although some points were lost, he had managed to score consistently well, losing only 42 points out of the 400 up until the start of the drive. The drive scored 132 out of 160, losing 20 of the possible 80 points in the shedding ring. A perfect scoring pen left Alistair and Corey with a final total of 590 and in top position so far on this day. Up until midday, nine handlers had run. Wynne Edwards had made the second highest score behind Alistair McRae, with Allard Owen some 24 points behind. John Templeton and Slot with a tenth to go to the post. His qualifying score of 399 had been the fourth highest overall and the highest for the five Scottish handlers. Spot is a three-year-old son of John Templeton's Ben and Stevenson's Jill.
Spot took a high score on the first outrun to pick up the left-hand group of ewes. Problems on the last part of the fetch, with the ewes splitting through the gateway in the hedgerow, lost John 51 of the 80 fetch points. The second outrun was immediately taken and scored top marks. By the time Spot brought the ewes around the handler's post on to the start of the drive, 76 of the 400 gather points had gone. John's accuracy on the drive was reflected in the score, with only 16 of the possible 160 deducted. The ship was also well taken, only losing 9 of the possible 80, ending up with a perfect scoring pen. The problems on the first fetch brought their final score down to 579, 11 points behind the leading run of Alistair McRae and Corey. Johnny Wilson qualified with a total of 387 points on the Friday with his six-year-old spot off Raymond McPherson's cap and Johnny's own peg. After such a memorable run on the hills of Lanarkshire last year, when in partnership with Spot he clenched the Supreme title, this year's Supreme was not to be so well remembered. By the end of his run, Johnny had dropped 227 points for a final score of 453. Derek Scrimmager came into the final days with a strong score of 393 with his six-year-old Jet. Derek farmed some 900 Swaledales on the Cumbrian Hills near Keswick in the north of England, where Jet has become his main hill working dog. This was the first year that Derek had managed to qualify to represent England, and so taking the highest English score in the qualifying trial was a real bonus. Jet goes back to the breeding of McKnight's Drift and Holmes' Lad. It was a grand effort for a first try, scoring fairly consistently through to the shedding ring. Unfortunately, problems on the shed left Derek running out of time and gaining no score for either the shed or the pen. He ended up with a final total of 437 for the day. Wilf Reed squeezed into the finals with 376 points with his five-year-old Sam, a son of John Thomas's Don and J.J. Reed's Jill. By the time he gathered both groups of sheep to the handler's post, he had only lost 58 of the possible 400. This left him in a strong position going onto the drive.
The first part of the drive was well handled with the use on a direct line to the gates. Some points were lost on the cross drive with the ewes having to be regrouped after splitting up just before the cross drive gates. Five points were lost on the shed with one of the marked sheep leaving the ring on an otherwise quickly mastered shed. A further eight points were lost at the pen with the sheep breaking past the pen before being regrouped and then finally penned on the second try. Will finished the course with a total score of 571 and in fourth place behind Wynne Edwards with just two dogs left to run. Thomas Longton, who won the 1992 English National Trial in Cumbria, qualified for a chance at the Supreme with his eight-year-old gem and a total of 376 points on Friday afternoon. Thomas, with his well-known Bess and mother of Jem, won the Supreme title back in They say that pure consistency is a sign of a true professional. When you look down the scoring of Thomas Longton's run, you can quickly see how close he came to catching the highest position. Thomas had a truly consistent run, losing very few points throughout any part of the whole course. 
His two gathers scored 349 out of 400. His drive lost him just 20 of the 160 points, and then dropping only 11 points on the shed. Unfortunately, problems at the pen then lost the final valuable points that were needed to put him into the lead to this point, ending up instead with a final 575, placing him in third position. In 1989 at Margam Park in South Wales, Bobby Dial took to the field on the final day of the International, the last handler to run. It was his first year running his young dog Wisp, and he had only narrowly managed to qualify for the final day. But his run with Wisp proved to be the finest challenge of the day. The Welsh crossbred ewes that were used at Margam in 1989 proved to be well settled and easily handled. This year's Supreme certainly had many similarities. With three more years of partnership, Bobby and Wisp once again took to the international field in Wales as the last run of the day. And the sheep that were being worked were well-settled Welsh half-bred ewes. When Wisp left Bobby's side on the first outrun, there was great expectations of a fine run.
Keeping the ewes totally steady throughout the whole run showed the expertise that we expect from handlers of the caliber of Bobby Dial. This run was a masterly piece of craftsmanship, and by the time the gate closed, they had scored 614 points and were separated out like this. It was to be the winning run of the day, placing Bobby Dial and Wisp in the highest position the second time in the past three years in the most prestigious trial in the world. And so the pen closed to end the finals for the 1992 Supreme. Bobby Dial's score of 614 and 60 merit points just edged him into the lead and the winner of the Supreme Championship Shield. Here are the final positions for the 1992 Championship Shields and Trophies.